we look at the serial comms module, module or SERCOM module associated with SAMD20. So this is a highly flexible multi-interface communication module. And as we've said before, it's configurable as I squared C, SBI, or UART. Double buffered reception, we'll see this in the implementations of the SBI and UART, and part of this enables us to, to capture information even without any data lost from the lowest sleep modes. Enhanced board rate generator, um, often enabling us to run and, and do full communications without an external oscillator and connected to the event system. So allowing um, flexible uh, reaction and working of the serial module without, without input from the main CPU. Also, we can wake up the device from all power modes. So, in this presentation, we'll cover some of the basic features of the different protocols that have been implemented. And you'll see that they're pretty full-featured implementations, even though we have achieved all three um, from, uh, in, in a single silicon module. So, the feature list associated with I squared C is we are able to work in both master and slave operations. Um, it is Philips I squared C compatible. SMBus, SMBus compatible, as mentioned before, that is a special type of I2C often used to talk to lithium-ion battery packs, etc. The for, fast mode is supported, 400 kilohertz, as opposed to the 100 kilohertz standard mode. And the physical interface includes both slew rate limited outputs, so you don't have the hard digital edges which can create RF transients in your system. Filtered inputs, in addition, a slave operation, the slave is able to wake up the processor in all sleep modes and uh, wake up on a dress match. In addition, we have a dress match in hardware for a single unique address or an address range. So there are a number of flexible options there. If we look at the actual register implementation of the I squared C, we can see here a board, rate, a board register. Now, Looking at these registers, whether they are in capital letters or small letters, indicates whether they are part of the main clock domain with the capitals or the generic clock domain um, with, the, with the small letters. And we will talk about the clock synchronization um, requirements as part of the next presentation on the API conventions. So. The board register is the register which we set that we want the I squared C to operate at. The board rate generator then attempts to match the same board rate and in turn clocks the serial clock line. In addition, we can also see that the board rate generator clocks a shift register which is shared by both TX data and RX data. So uh, both TX and RX share a shift, shift register and we can notice that the layout is pretty similar on the slave side. What you'll also notice though is that before um, data is sent through from the, the RX data register on the slave, uh, there must be in a match with the address mask. SBI is a full duplex four wire interface double buffered receiver supporting all four SBI modes of operation. Here you can see single data direction operation allows alternate function on the master out slave in or master in slave out pins and selectable least or most significant bit first data transfer. The master operation, we have a serial clock speed up to half the system clock speed. So recall that the CPU runs up to 48 megahertz so our serial clock speed at half that speed is 24 megabits per second. We have an 8-bit clock generator and in slave operation the serial clock speed is able to run up to the system clock speed but still limited at 24 megabits per second. Optional 8-bit address match operation and also operational in all sleep modes. 
If we have to look at the similar diagram to before, we can see as before a board reg register which sets the overall target speed of or board rate of the SBI. Board rate generator attempting to match this register, clocking a shift register. And you can see that the board rate generator as well clocking a serial clock line. <coughs> Again, we see that a shift register is shared between a TX data and an RX data uh, registers. But here we also see that we have double buffering. So the shift register on receive first sends data into an RX buffer register, which is then later available in an RX data register. Uh, part of this ensures that we don't miss any data when the um, master or, s or slave in this case is in sleep mode and receiving. Additionally, we'll see that the serial clock um, from the board rate register only clocks the shift register of the slave when the slave select line is low. And that in addition, the shift register uh, clocks the, the, um, the master in slave out and master out slave in lines. Again, we have a similar uh, matchup with the address in, after which um, data available in the Rx data it will be sent on into the processor. And here, just looking at the overview of the, uh, the basic protocol, that once the slave select line goes low, um, uh, data is being able to be sent between the master in slave out and master out slave in lines. So both SBI and I squared C are half, um, well, Okay, so now we have a look at the UART. The UART register uh, available here, um, quite flexible. Serial frames, five, six, seven, eight, or nine uh, data bits, one or two stop bits, and here we have an odd or even parity generation and parity check um, as well. Buffer overflow and frame error detection and noise filtering, including false start bit detection and digital low pass filter. If we look at the implementation in the UART as well, again a board rate generator, um, and here we can see that the board rate generator can be clocked either via an external clock or an internal clock, and dividing a board rate uh, provided by this clock up to 16 times. Um, for the first time here, we see that uh, TX data and RX data or do not share a shift register but have their own shift register to support um, the full du duplex communications on TX and RX lines um, independently. And again, we have a duffel, double buffering on, on the RX. First, an RX buffer followed by an RX data where the, where the data is finally available to your application. So, full duplex operation, asynchronous with clock reconstruction or synchronous operation, internal or external clock source, and the main clock domain, we have a board rate register, and in the generic clock domain, we have the board rate generator. We can operate in all sleep modes, and operation at speeds up to half the system clock for internally generated clock, as mentioned before, 24 megabits per second, and up to speeds of the system clock for externally generated clock. And uh, that concludes our initial presentation on the serial communications module.